Hello everyone, I hope you're well. It is very late at night in Sydney, Australia. Um, now, I've just come off doing the show Credlin on Sky News. Very good show, you should all watch 6pm weeknights if you have Foxtel. Um, and we covered some good topics tonight, uh, one in particular which I thought I should have a bit more of a chat about. Um, now, it's to do with the notorious James Damore, who wrote that very intriguing Google memo about the fact that men and women are different, which ultimately got him fired. Now, he's got an ongoing lawsuit with Google, of course, and a document has emerged recently that is uh, quite interesting. And this was a document written by the HR department, and it was called Inclusive Perf. You can see where this is going and it was distributed to managers. And the uh, point of the document, and I will quote here from it, is uh, it cautions managers about rewarding people when they exhibit values and practices that are part of the dominant and either punishing or failing to reward people when they exhibit values that are outside of the dominant cultural norm. The dominant cultural norm of being, of course, straight, white, and male. Now, some of the traits that the document listed as belonging to the dominant white male cultural norm were winning, meritocracy, front of the room and persuasive, argument and uh, perfectionism, as opposed to the, I guess what they call out of the norm, minority culture, which were subjectivity as opposed to objectivity, um, everything's a work in progress, seventh generation thinking, generally more kind of low key trays. And um, the overall point of the document was to demonstrate to managers how they could give feedback to minorities in a different way than they would give feedback to white males. Um, and by different, I mean, given the comparison with the trays, I'd say cushier, softer, less assertive, you know, ultimately condescending. Um, now, this makes me quite angry for a number of reasons. Um, coddling minorities in this way and making out like they can't handle the same level of critique as white males and insisting that traits like winning and perfectionism are associated with white men as opposed to minorities is profoundly racist. It's incredibly racist. It's what they call the bigotry of low expectations. And um, one of the things that I despise about white leftists at the moment is the hypocrisy on the subject of racism. So they have this attitude that involves sort of tippy-toeing around minority groups and sort of, you know, oh, poor little minority, poor little person. We're going to, as white people, police our behavior and change our language and treat you differently and give you feedback in a kind of nicer, calmer way because ultimately we are white people and we need to protect you. That's the attitude that they have, which is absolutely sick making. And it is interesting because they call conservatives racist, but we're the ones who don't see skin color and see people as individuals with individual traits and tricks and thoughts and minds and souls. We don't see people as identity groups. It would not even occur to a conservative to tippy toe around someone from a minority group when giving them feedback because we believe that people are individuals. We believe in a meritocracy and we believe that everyone ha should have equality of opportunity and therefore be treated on the same level and with the same amount of respect. Um, so that's the great hypocrisy with white leftists. And my theory has always been that the worst racists are actually the anti-racists because they are so vehement that they are, are tolerant and inclusive and accepting of everyone that what they're actually doing is projecting. So compensating for what they're feeling inside with external behavior that is completely different. So deep down, they're fully aware of their own bigotry and are trying to, I guess, throw people off the scent. And that's where this sort of bigotry of low expectations comes from. Um, now, the one who put this best is, of all people, Malcolm X, 
50 years ago. Now, Malcolm X is someone I disagree with vehemently on a number of issues because he was pro-black supremacy, he liked the idea of apartheid, and he believed in the nation of Islam. However, uh, he did have one thing correct, and he stated that there was no one more racist than the white leftist. And the reason for that was that they act like they're the friends of African Americans and act like they're in their court and that they advocate for them. But really, their primary motive is power. All they're doing is actually jockeying for power. So by befriending the African American and, and you know, I guess being sycophantic, all they're doing is using African Americans as weapons against conservatives. That was his opinion back then, and that has come full circle um, over the late 20th and early 21st centuries. We've gone completely the opposite direction from Martin Luther King, who believed that people should be judged on the content of their character rather than the color of their skin. So this attitude that white leftists have to minority groups, that is that they need to be coddled and protected and helped at every single turn, has no place in modern society. We are all equally capable in our own different ways. We are all interesting in our own different ways. And treating minorities like they are children is not doing any of that justice. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you like that video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Tell me what you want me to make a video about because I will read them all.